And I started with, how do I make $100 million in 12 months? From what I remember from our conversations yeah. with drinks, you upped the goal to 1 billion yeah. in 12 months. Yeah. Did that happen? And so what I did about 10 years ago is I started journaling to envision like what it was I wanted to get out of my life. And then I think where I made the biggest breakthrough, I wasn't using the journal no longer to write down what I wanted. I was writing, I was using the journal process to write down how do I get what I want. And I think that was the biggest breakthrough that I had, whereas, and you think about it a lot, is that a lot of people, when they're thinking in their mind, they're already asking themselves, why? Why did this happen to me? Why am I not happy with my body? Why am I not happy with my bank account? I deliberately bought a new notebook and I started with, how do I make $100 million in 12 months? And when I first started, the back to the point, like how? It was not, why don't I have $100 million? Like, how do I get $100 million? And I thought, let me be really cheeky with myself and say, in 12 months. And that's when you saw me. And by the time when you saw me, I also thought it was a crazy, crazy thing to try and do. But the funny thing is that by doing three or four sessions like that, I actually figured out a way to do it and then ended up doing it, which was just a great. So when you saw me, I, I had no hope or belief whatsoever that it was possible, but it was just like a fun thing to do. Like you could, I could watch something on Netflix, I could go to the cinema, or I could just sit in a cool cafe and try and solve this ridiculous, crazy question. And what surprised me is that the more and more I did this kind of exercise, I would start to solve these problems. Okay, so you started out with 100 billion in one year. Sorry, 100 million in 100 one million, year. You yeah. executed that. I believe you then upped the goal, from what I remember from our conversations yeah. with drinks, you upped the goal to 1 billion yeah. in 12 months. Yeah. Did that happen? Um, it did, no, it didn't happen completely, uh, but, it, but it came super close. What, what was the super close? Um, so we started a company called iFlix, and you know, literally within two years of starting the company, you know, the company was worth five, six hundred million dollars within 24 months of starting the company. Got it. So, and, and but what was interesting is, is that when you know when I was when I was doing the journaling for iFlex, you know, I literally set myself the goal of how do I make this a billion dollar company? How do I make this like within 24 months? And and at the time, I thought it was crazy, but I thought you know what, like if I'm not gonna be crazy, I'm never gonna figure this out. If I just keep doing the same thing that every other entrepreneur does, then then I'm never gonna get a crazy outsized result. And what was interesting is that we came up with a crazy plan, shared it with the team. You know, they got behind it. And, and, and so to the point, what was funny is that we didn't hit the billion dollar goal, but we hit a $500 million goal. Man, man damn, that's pretty damn good to hit the goal. So so one of the things like you read, like sometimes like set the goal so far like ahead that even though if, even if you only hit half your goal, it's still pretty damn good achievement. Right. It's like that quote, aim for the stars and maybe you land on the moon. Correct. Yeah. This, and this is kind of how you play the game of life. It's, mm. it's some people, their goal is to climb mountains. Your goal is to take companies public. I believe right now you have taken five companies public. Correct. Now, there was a moment, though, mm. when the dot-com bubble burst, yep. when you had started. So Patrick started a search engine in Asia. Yep. Um, I believe it was called Catcher. Yep. Catcher. And when the dot-com bubble burst, he basically was on the verge of losing everything. Tell us that story, how you rebound it, because that's a pretty cool story. Um, okay. Um... So what happened is then we woke up one day literally with $4 million in debt. Um, the three, whatever, 300 staff went to 30 staff within one afternoon. We had to cut four countries, cut all the staff. Uh, you know, it's really tough saying, I'm like, I'm really sorry. Like, I don't know what's happened to your life savings. Um, you know, I was in a really dark place. You know, I would go to bed every night, literally hoping that like my building that I lived in would blow up while I, while I was asleep. Like I wouldn't have to wake up to face the world tomorrow. And I stumbled across a book called Unlimited Power by Anthony Robbins. Um, bought the book, went home, read it like for a few, like literally, it was one of those, you know, you ever have a book where you just can't, you just can't put it down. And the book was kind of exactly what I needed at that point in time because I, ha I hadn't given up, but I, ju I just didn't have the mental and the physical strength to keep going anymore. Like, you know, my dream had to be an entrepreneur and I'd seen that completely collapse. I was on the front page of the newspaper, you know, there was literally a headline saying, dot com bust big photo of me um, and you know my poor mother had lost her li life savings backing me and, and so you, like, you just didn't have the mental strength or clarity to even like how the f do you get out of this and then I read the book and you know straight away it just it just gave me such a great blueprint on how to be more effective 
in the way that you use your brain, the way that you vision things, the questions that you ask, the way you communicate with yourself. And I literally went from there and executed everything. And kind of over an eight-year period, you know, now we have 3,000 people across 30 countries. Wow. My mom got back all her savings. Um, <clears throat> you know, and it's just been such a beautiful experience. So that was one of the key things. If, if you've never journaled, then just first get out all the bullshit in your life in the journal and then start to, like, what do you want out of life? And then start to, how do I get that in life? Put on some good music, go to a beautiful place, and I think, and just commit to just do one session in a cool cafe somewhere. And I think that you'll start to get addicted to it and you'll find it such a beautiful therapeutic experience. And what you start to find, which is really different, you start to write the story of your life. And, I, and I'll tell you what's been mind blowing because I've been doing this process now for 10 years. Sometimes I would, I would write like, and I'd be like, okay, what is like, what does Patrick's life in 10 years look like? And I just write it, blah, 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 like just crap, right? Like, and, and it's so freaking scary because I'd go back and read what I wrote and like, it's like a 90% success rate. Like all the crazy things that I've written down have actually ended up coming into my life. <laughs>